Hello everyone and welcome you all in my channel Learn Math Easily. In today's video, I am going to do one of the very important topic of group theory that is question group. But before I will start with the explanation of this topic, I will give you a formal definition of this topic, question group. Then I will explain you each and every concept step by step. So let's start with the formal definition. Let G be a group. N be a normal subgroup of G. Define G by N which is equal to N G such that G belongs to G. That is G by N is a collection of all right cosets of N in G. G by N is called a questioned group of G with respect to N. Now I will explain what is the meaning of this. You have given G is a group and N is a normal subgroup of G. Then we are defining G by N. Here G by N means the collection of all the right cosets of N in G. N G such that G belongs to G. Then such type of collection is called a questioned group of G. This is a question group of G with respect to N. Now if we have different different normal subgroups are there. Suppose N1, N2 and so on NK. Then we can form, if we have different different normal subgroups. Then we can form different different question subgroups out of that like G by N1, G by N2 and so on G by N K. This G by N1 is called question subgroup of N1 and G. This is called question subgroup of N2 and G and so on question subgroup of N K and G. These different different types of question groups we can form. Now from the beginning of the chapter group theory, I was keep on telling you that G can be group with respect to any operation. It's not just a product group. It's not just with respect to multiplication only. It can be with any operation if it satisfies the four axioms. Closure, associativity, existence of identity and existence of inverse. So, here I have taken the definition in the definition it as a product group because from the beginning only I have told you that we are taking it as a product group while proving theorems and definitions and results without loss of generality. The same thing can happen with respect to additive group also or with respect to any other operation. But by default we are taking it as a product group sub product group and most of the things we are proving it as a product only. That's why I will write one note here that if G is an additive group, if G is an additive group, and N is normal in G, then G by N is equal to N plus G such that G belongs to G. Now we are continuously saying this is a questioned group. We are highlighting this that G by N is a group. So if it is a group means it is satisfying all the four axioms. Closure, associativity, existence of identity and existence of inverse with respect to 
see here the products sorry the elements are cosets so the g by n is a group with respect to product of cosets and if it is an additive group then g by n is a group with respect to addition of cosets but by default everything whatever we are proving in group theory we will prove it with respect to product only in the same way if anybody asks you to prove with respect to if a group is an additive group then same way you have to do instead of product you have to apply the concept of addition of uh, addition in group theory so let's start with this since g by n is a group this is called question group with respect to product of cosets so first property that need to get satisfied is closure property let n a n b belongs to g by n since n is a normal subgroup of g therefore n a n b is equal to n a b i have done this in last theorem if n is a normal subgroup of g then n a n b is equal to n a b that last theorem that i have done in earlier video that i will be constantly using in entire rest of the topics so that particular theorem should be very clear with everybody of you so this belongs to g by n because a and b belongs to g therefore product of ab belongs to g because of closure property in g therefore n ab belongs to g and this n a n b belongs to g by n was arbitrary result holds for all n a n b belongs to g by n therefore here closure property holds second thing is associativity let n a n b n c belongs to g by n consider n a n b into n c so here what we will get this we will get n a b into n c so this is equal to n a b into c which is equal to n a into b c because a b into c is equal to a into b c associativity in g associativity in g so this is equal to n a into n b into n c therefore n a into n b into n c is equal to n a into n b into n c and the way we have taken n a n b n c these all were arbitrary elements therefore result holds for all for all n a n b n c belongs to g by n therefore here associativity holds associativity holds third is existence of identity existence of identity if we take any group g by n there exists n e which is nothing but equal to n only belongs to g by n such that n a into n e which is equal to n a into e which is n a because e is the identity element in 
g so a into e will be a which you can write a you can write it as e into a which is n e into n a therefore n a into n e which is equal to n e into n a which is equal to n a and this holds for all n a belongs to g by n therefore n e which is equal to n is the identity element of g by n now the last thing that we have to prove is there exists an identity uh, inverse for each and every element belongs to g by n existence of inverse for all n a belongs to g by n there exists n a inverse belongs to g by n such that n a n a inverse which is equal to n a a inverse which is equal to n e because e is the identity element in g therefore a a inverse which is equal to e which is equal to a inverse a this you can write as a n a inverse a which is equal to n a inverse n a therefore n a n a inverse is equal to n a inverse n a which is equal to n e which is n therefore n a inverse is the identity element for n a and n a was any arbitrary element of g by n if we take n b then n b inverse is the sorry in, is the inverse is the inverse for n a therefore n a inverse is the inverse for n a if we take n b then n b inverse is the inverse for n a if we take n c then n c inverse is the inverse for n c therefore inverse of every element of g by n exist in g by n therefore inverse of every element of g by n exists in g by n therefore g by n is a group with respect to product of cosets in the same way if we take additive group then g by n is a group with respect to addition of forces so that was the end of this topic in sorry end of this definition in the next video we will do some important properties of question groups which are related to group properties like if a group is cyclic then what is the condition for g by n and if a group is abelian if a group is a group is finite then what is the condition of g by n such kind of things we will consider in our next video and that will be the end of question group after that some small small topics are there that i will do continuously either with one video or two videos depends upon the length of the video If you like the video then don't forget to hit the like button and in future if you want to see such kind of higher mathematics videos then don't forget to subscribe for my channel thank you so much for watching this